Paula. We are here today at the Wimbledon final. It is match point and our crowd is roaring. I'm feeling the pressure. It is match point and my heart is throbbing. I'm going to go for a shot and because Roger Federer is so bad at tennis and he is so nervous I will automatically win the point if I make the shot. This is so easy. Back at home Eric's coach drilled Eric on his physics homework. They say that, since Eric was a young boy he had the capability of knowing the resultant vector of his shot. Using my super physics knowledge I will hit the ball with a velocity of 20 meters per second at an angle, theta, of 30 degrees. From this information we are able to conclude the x and y components. The velocity in the x direction can be found by the equation vx equals the resultant velocity times the cosine of theta. Massive calculations. Vx equals 17.32 meters per second. Mrs. Jen, you are a genius. Thank you. Please say my name correctly. But it is a free country. Actually, I know more. We also know what your shot's y component is. We can find this by Vy equals the resultant velocity times the sine of theta. Massive calculations. Boy equals 10 meters per second. Mrs. Jen, what are vectors? A vector is something that has direction and magnitude. What is theta? Where do we get 30 degrees? Theta is 30 because it is the angle in degrees counterclockwise from the x-axis. Did you listen in class today? Um. It is okay. If you were listening you would have also learned that at the apex of a projectile motion there is a y velocity of 0 meters per second. This is because the y component is affected by gravity which accelerates the ball at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Whoa. Now let's play the point. Puma. I must have blinked. Did the ball clear the net? Let's find out. The distance from the baseline to the net is 23.77 meters. The height of the net is 1.07 meters high. Mrs. Jend, I cannot believe you missed it. I hit the ball just when the ball impacted the ground at the baseline. But Mrs. Jend, how in the world do we solve that? This is Mickey Mouse. You make me want to cry. Listen in class tomorrow. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Okay, we must find the time it takes for the ball to reach the net. In order to do this, we use the X component we found earlier. 17.32 meters per second. Yes, you are listening now. I'm proud. Time equals distance over velocity. Therefore we can get 1.37 seconds for time. Okay. Now what do we do next? We can find the velocity of the ball when it passes the plane of the net. Vfy equals Voy plus acceleration or gravity times the time we just found. 1.37 seconds. Well yay. Vfy equals massive calculations minus 3.43 meters per second. Mrs. Jend, the ball is already moving down. That is right. Now we have the OY, the FY, gravity which is minus 9.8 meters per second squared and time. We need to know the height or XY at the time it crosses the net. We can use this equation off of the equation sheet I just memorized. VF squared equals VO squared plus 2 times acceleration in time. You are learning so quickly. I will let you calculate this one. Massive calculations, the FLJBG, Zvob Zvoibovov, 1.1 meters. The ball made it over the net. Mrs. Jen, did I win Wimbledon? I'm not sure yet. We must figure out if the ball traveled more than 47.54 meters, the length of a tennis court. We must find the time the ball travels during the total flight. We can do this by knowing that the VOY equals 10 meters per second and that VFY equals minus 10 meters per second because of symmetry. We know gravity of course. Calculating. Time equals 2.04 seconds. 
x equals vx times t. Vx equals 17.32 meters per second. The distance traveled is 35.33 meters. I won Wimbledon. If we included error resistance in spin I may not have won, and it may be a little bit tougher of a problem. Congratulations, the ball cleared the net by 0.3 meters, and landed in. You made me nervous too. I think you are ready for your physics exam now. I sure hope so.